going to prepare a statement of cash flows using the indirect method. Watch for other videos where I complete the operating section using the direct method. So for the statement of cash flows, there are three sections. One is operating, the second would be investing activities, and then we have financing activities. This video will focus on the operating activities for the company using the indirect method. Watch for other videos that focus on the investing and financing activities. So using the indirect method, we have a certain order that we should follow. To prepare this statement, you will begin with the net income, which comes from the income statement. So the other document that I have here for you shows the income statement for Dexter Company for the end of December, and then comparative balance sheets, which means for more than one year. So we have two different years, last year and this year, if you will. So we want to begin with our net income, which is coming here from the income statement. Next, we want to make adjustments to that net income to reconcile net income to cash. First adjustments we make is to add back any non-cash expenses that were subtracted to get to net income. So depreciation expense is almost always going to be there. If there is an amortization expense, that would be added back as well. And that's because it is not a cash movement, and we are interested in how the cash moved for this statement, how it flowed in and how it flowed out. The next thing to look at is gains and losses that are out of the ordinary, not the net income, but like on the gain or loss of selling some equipment, or in this case, land. We want to neutralize that gain or loss, just make it go away. And the reason is because we deal with the full amount of cash in or, or cash out when we get to other sections of the statement of cash flows. So if there is a loss shown in the income statement, a loss on the sale or disposal of something like land, we want to add that back. If there were a gain, we would subtract it. In this case, we have the loss on the sale of land, so we want to add that amount back, and it was $2,500. Neutralize any gains or losses. And then the next part is to go to the balance sheet and compare e current assets and current liabilities. So first, let's have a look at cash. Cash is not going to be reflected on the statement of cash flows in this listing that I mentioned. This is going to be our check figure. So actually, if we look at, and I'm just putting these numbers in the calculator to show you, the current balance for cash is $12,000. The balance last year was $9,500. So we know that the change or difference in the cash balance was an increase of $2,500. That's actually our check figure. That is what the ultimate answer is going to be for the full statement of cash flows. So that's the only thing we use this cash account for at this point. Skip over it. It's not going to be listed individually on the statement of cash flows. Now we're going to all of the current assets. That's going to be all of these items up here that are listed as current. We're going to look at them individually. So we have the accounts receivable first. The balance was, last year, it was $18,400. The balance now is $22,000. So $22,000 is the current balance. The balance last year, $18,400. That's a difference of $3,600. So an increase in the accounts receivable of $3,600. Accounts receivable and all current assets have an indirect relationship with this statement so that if they increase, we need to subtract the amount. So an increase of, in accounts receivable, $3,600, we're going to subtract that $3,600. We denote that by putting it in parentheses. Next, we're going to have a look at the inventory account. Inventory account is also a current asset clear this out. So let's start with the current balance of $25,400, and we will subtract last year's balance, $20,500. So we get a balance of $4,900, a difference, a change of $4,900. Now look to see, did it increase or decrease? It increased as well. 
it is an increase. Because there is an indirect relationship with current assets, we will subtract that amount. Again, it's denoted with the parentheses. Let's go back. Prepaid advertising is another, it looks like maybe our last current asset to investigate. The balance was $8,600. The balance now is $10,000. 10000 minus 8600 is a change of 1400 Now look to see, did it increase or decrease? Well, the balance was 8600 Now it's 10000 so that is an, another increase of 1400 Go to the statement. Increase in prepaid advertising because of the indirect relationship or inverse relationship. We want to subtract that amount. Now we're finished with our current assets. We're ready to, we're going to skip over property, plant, and equipment because property, plant, and equipment is going to be reflected primarily in the investing section, which will be a separate video. And we're going to liabilities. For this statement, for the operating section of this statement, we are interested in the current liabilities. So all the items above here, there are three of them. The long-term liabilities will be reflected in the financing section. Stockholder equity changes will also be reflected in the financing section. So we have accounts payable. Let's pull up the calculator. Now with your current liabilities, we find a direct relationship. So if it increased, we add it. If it decreases, we subtract it. Current balance is 15300 Last year's balance was 12100 a difference of 3200 Now I'm going to go back and look and see, did it increase or decrease? Well, 15000 of course, is a higher number than 12100 so that's going to be an increase. So we're going to add it back because there is... There it is, skipped over one. Increase in accounts payable, 3200 direct relationship, so I'm going to add that back. That is an increase. Next, we have salaries payable, also a current liability. Let's examine that one. I always take the larger number first and then go back and look to see was that change an increase or decrease. So 16,400 minus 14,000 is a difference of 2,400. Now what happened? Well, the balance was 16,400. The balance now is 14,000. So that is a decrease. So a decrease in salaries payable because of the direct relationship and these current liabilities, we're going to subtract that number. Subtract 2,400. Back to the current liability section, we have income taxes payable. The balance was 700 and the balance now is 1200 So I'm going to take that 1200 just because it's simpler that way, subtract the 700 and I get a difference here of $500. Now, did it increase or did it decrease? It increased. So we have an increase of $500. We owe more taxes than we did this time last year. We didn't pay as much. So this is going to be an addition as well because of the direct relationship. Now what you want to do is net these items. So we began with net income, and all of these are adjustments too. So you're adding and subtracting to get to, and you have to put all this labeling in here as well, identify what each label is. This is going to be your net cash provided by the operating activities. Netting them together, we get a positive $5,600. But again, this is not all of it. Remember I said our check figure would be $5,200. $5,200 is when we get to the end of the statement. So make sure you go out and find the video that discusses the financing and the investing activities as well.